Oh my gosh, we have so much catching up to do. Let's start from the beginning. The move. Things got so crazy during the moving process. I just couldn't even keep up with filming. I couldn't keep up with editing. I was packing up the house. I was packing up the business. And then the big move was about to happen. It happened and then we went to Japan. So let's catch up on the past month in my life. <laughs> why, why, why? We just got the new Pimple Patches official uh, sachets in the mail that we designed on stream. Excited. Finally, I don't have to hand make them anymore. Oh, yay. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Oh, they look so good already. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Color there seems a little more purpley than mm. I would have anticipated, but that's nice. really nice. Yay. Oh, I love it. This is so much, such an improvement, such a level up from homemade. Wow. Yay. And we designed that on stream together, guys. Pardon my appearance. This haircut is literally the worst thing ever. And I've been like so hesitant to like post or like take selfies or do makeup or anything because I just feel like so humiliated <laughs> by this haircut. But anyway, uh, moving process is like, it's been ongoing for like two, a week and a half, two weeks now. And our house is chaos and every single day, like I'm slowly chipping away at it so that I don't like have to like full force, like a few days before the move, just like pack this whole house. So I'm slowly getting things done for the big move in two weeks. Like not this weekend that we're in right now, like today's Saturday, uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after that is our mo official moving day. And we officially get the house in a week and a half. So, but like we move in and like T minus two weeks. It's crazy. It's so crazy. I'm so excited, but I'm gonna miss this place. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss it a little bit, but I'm excited for like a fresh start and a new beginning. So our house is just like totally coming apart. It's slightly chaotic. <laughs> a lot of stuff is already packed up and in the garage. But I think the worst thing is my closet. It's, this is always the worst thing ever. It's just insanity, but it's a work in process. It just, it just needs to be vacuum sealed a bunch, but yeah, it's like, it's falling apart over here. I guess here's a little house tour now that we're... <laughs> har. Haru. Hi, Har. Yeah. Oh, sleepy Har. I haven't taken apart this room too much yet because Haru loves this room and he's always sleeping in here, but it's it's coming apart. Like all the curtains came down last weekend. This is our second bathroom box. There's literally like, there's just things like up top, that's it, otherwise nothing. And then my office, I'm starting to take apart today. Honey Boy's old office is all mostly packed up. My office is starting to come apart now. I packed up a lot of the inventory because the real estate agent, like the agent for our house, might be coming by this weekend to do a walkthrough. So I'm just trying to take things apart a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's coming apart. It's it's really. But yeah, I'm gonna miss this view the most. Like I when we first moved here, I really hated being right on the sidewalk, but. You know, people don't walk by too, too often. And then the nature is just so refreshing. The window open. I'm not gonna have that at the new house. My office is gonna be upstairs and the view is gonna be like another, what the heck is this squirrel doing? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss this a bit. There's something so peaceful about it, but at the same time, I'm excited for the new light levels that I'm gonna get in the new house because it's so bright and sunny and less dungeony. But yeah, this house really, you know, I really grew a lot while I was here. I grew a lot, I experienced a lot. 
You know, it's our first house we ever lived in, even though it was a rental. It still was like our first house. I took down my lampshade cover, restoring everything to how it was. Me in my, <laughs> my one piece. And yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a big change, but that's, you know, this is not ours. That's, that came with the house, it's the landlord's. It's gonna be a huge change. And you guys experienced a lot with me too, moving here to Texas. Definitely gonna miss this place, but you know, I, a lot happened when we were living here. Like I experienced a lot, I grew a lot. I also, you know, went through some really hard times and this was probably one of the hardest moves of my life so far coming here. Because as you guys know, America is not somewhere I ever wanted to live, especially not Texas. It's never somewhere I saw myself having to go, but you know, that's, you know, that's just how life plays out. And I'm excited to be moving on to the next chapter and owning our own place and having that freedom and flexibility of not having to pay rent, so high rent anymore. And you know, having that you know, ability to customize your house however you want, if you can, right? It's gonna be a huge change. I'm gonna miss the nature of this suburb that we're in, but it's a fresh start and it's gonna open up a whole lot of new doors for us. And right after we move, like a month after, we're gonna be going to Japan for a month. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be so busy. It's gonna be so fun, but I'm really excited to share this next chapter with you guys and you know, see, see what we do with the place. But yeah, pardon, I feel like I look so gross, but like every day I just look like, you know, it's just like, doing things to restore this house it's doing like packing it's moving prep it's calling people it's been so busy over here that i just like half my clothes are packed up my makeup's half packed up like it's just <laughs> it's chaos and i think probably the next time i check in is gonna be like the moving day probably and just showing little snippets here and there of like the moving process Good morning, my honeys. Today is a big day. It's not the moving day, not yet, but it is our final walkthrough day of the house to confirm like the blinds are in, to confirm all the patches were done, all any missing parts, anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the final look at the house before we move in in like a week. <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy. So we're excited. It is a cloudy, rainy day, but I think by the time we're done doing the walkthrough. It should clear up, hopefully. Fingers crossed that we can see it nice and sunny. I feel like every time we go to the house, it's a cloudy, cloudy, rainy day, but we'll see, we'll see. So let's head on out and go view the new house one more time before our official move-in. <laughs> Grabbing bubble tea for the drive. So first, all the brown sugars at the bottom. The hell? <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> hey y'all. Caramel brulee, brown sugar, pearl milk tea. Mmm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, fuck. Is it good? Yeah, that's nice. Cookies that is... and cream slush. Milk tea. It's a milkshake. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> So go in there and get another. <laughs> always cloudy every time we come here but I can't wait for you guys to see this place when it's actually like a nice sunny day but oh my god all the blinds are in on all the windows so we will have some privacy when we initially move in they're just doing a final like cleaning and final touch-ups on a few things but otherwise it's move in ready Very excited to move in. 
So I really want to get off Wayfair some of those mirrors that have like, like kind of like smart mirrors where they have the lights built into it as well. And then also get like an exchange light for the top, like something just straight beam style. But yeah, uh, they're like really reasonable on Wayfair, like $200, $100. So I'm just getting the dimensions for that right now. Goodbye house. It's time to go to the new house. Moving day, it's crazy. The movers had to do two trips because the truck that they were originally supposed to bring, like a huge transport truck, wasn't working. So they had to bring a uh, attachable enclosed trailer. <laughs> so they had to make two trips. So it's going a little bit longer than it initially should have gone. But the good news is almost done. Internet is set up, uh, waiting for washer, dryer, and fridge install. And then we got Cess here. That was a bit hard in the morning. She was she knew something was up, so she was hiding in a bush. So it was really hard to get her out. And then what else? Yeah, it's just been it's been a little crazy. It's been exhausting. I am tired. The boys are scared. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We do have to go back to the house tomorrow uh, just to pick up any little knickknacks that. Uh, couldn't fit or just that like got missed and then just do like a once over clean before the move out cleaners come and uh, do the big shebang on the following day. But yeah, we'll be going to the house tomorrow, but today is gonna be just gentle unpacking, setting up the house, and then we'll try to just take it a little bit easy um, so that we don't hurt ourselves too much at this move. The exciting stuff. All right, movers are gone. The time has come to unleash kitty boys. Hey, where's everybody? Where did they go? Did they win? I'm scared. Oh, I'm just scared. What the win? Who are you? What the win? Come on. Everybody's gone now. No scared. It so everyone can explore the closet. Yeah, hey hi. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> hey hi. What a crazy, busy, full day. Uh, yeah, I think it's like 7 p.m. and they just left. So that went from 8 a.m. they officially got at our house until now just because of the fact that they did not have the truck they anticipated to have but either way it's done we got a washer we got a fridge the dryer that we bought um somehow was significantly damaged uh so we have to submit like warranty and stuff like that for that figure it out but yeah oh hard. i'm scared he's so scared he hard. yeah you come out you okay? Yeah. He's never moved before. <laughs> you right hard. Oh, you puffin. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Tail down. Funny win. To come out, funny one. <laughs> Y'all comfy in there? Good morning, honeys. Welcome to another day in the new house. Oh my gosh, it is crazy. There, is, It's like chaos in here. It's getting better. It's getting better, but it's still very chaotic. Very, very chaotic. Oh. <laughs> I am loving it so far. I am absolutely in love with the lighting here. This like is the best. I love it so much. 
I'm so excited to be able to like set it up, customize it at some point. There won't be any fun customizations for a while though, just because life is pretty busy. I think in two and a half weeks, we're off to Japan. So <laughs> it's crazy busy, but it's just gonna be unpacking and making sure the house is like livable for now. But gosh, it's just, it feels really good. It feels really, really good. See, this is the current <laughs> stuff. It's still very much so everywhere. It's still very much so busy and chaotic. The cats are really loving it. For the upper level, I installed a little safety net for now until I find a better, more nice looking situation just so that no kitty falls from very, very, very high up down onto the ground. So a little safety thing, got that up and sorted. The living room is almost functional. The TV still isn't set up. I don't know what to do with this space though. It's very light. It's not like this is not planned at all, but I would love to have a similar thing that we had in our old house with like a kind of little wall. I don't know, you could call it mount or platform or shelf ledge system because it was really nice having that. And I would love to get an electrician in to put an outlet from here behind the TV mount so you don't have the ugly cord hanging down. And then at some point, I would love one day to have like an electric or gas fireplace put in here because I do know that there is a gas line that comes through because they have one accessible there if you want to have a barbecue set up. So I don't know, but that would be like super expensive and way down the road, not anytime soon, but for sure want to switch to having like a ledge shelf thing here, a floating shelf that's like wood and then get an electrician to put, put an electrical right behind there. Yeah, so far, really, really loving it. For the kitchen too, I really don't like the gray backsplash tile. And in the summertime, I hope that I can by myself uh, redo the tiling at the back to something that I personally prefer. And then also I wanna reface the cabinets, not completely change the cabinets, just redo the facing of them. So cut out some new doors, redo the veneer on them, remove the traditional kind of edging at the top. That's like, I don't know, I really don't like that. A lot of a lot of mods I wanna do. And then in the future, I don't know if I could do it myself or hire a contractor, but I would love to change the banisters here to something more sleek and modern and not so traditional looking. And what I was thinking, like there's a lot of things I wanna do, but it's all like future related, like way, way out in the future. But I would love to either like get rid of the carpet, but to be honest, even though it's like an allergy heaven, dust heaven, like you name it, it still feels very nice. Like I have to admit, carpet does feel nice, but I hate that it's gray. It just, it feels very cheap to me and it definitely is. So maybe in the future someday, change it to like a more creamy beige looking carpet. That's not gray, because I really do hate gray aesthetic. In the near future too, we also want to change out the light fixtures because this is just not us. And then <laughs> the fan is just meh. And then also the whole upstairs has those classic like nipple lights. <laughs> you know, you know the ones I'm talking about that every builder default house has. And I they are just so ugly. So I would love to change it to something a little more modern, uh, but budget friendly for the upstairs as well. I am like really cold in here though. I don't know why, cause it's like, it says it's like 71 Fahrenheit. I think that's like 20, 24, 23, but I've been so cold the whole time we've been here, which is weird. But <laughs> Flynn loves the carpet. He loves it. But yeah, so. Aside from technical stuff and getting the house just set up with like services, um, <laughs> I've been trying to tackle moving all the glow and boxes. I still don't have my office set up. <laughs> just getting that kind of set up. So, so far last night I put together my packing room. It's still chaotic and crazy, but at least like I can fulfill orders. <laughs> so. That's just inner boxes. Like all of this behind me is just inner boxes for the IPLs. It's not even the IPLs. It's just the, the packaging for him. So it's like, 
This room is gonna be insane. It needs some heavy duty organization, but that's just how much like, that's just how much my business has grown and how much like my work is, what is going on? Flynn, <laughs> you're crazed. The hell? How you can get down? No, every, I swear, when we moved into our old house, you guys were like, oh, listen to your cat. If they're climbing high and yelling like that, it usually means like there's rodents. No, he, he just loves being up high. If there's an opportunity for him to be high up, he will take it at all costs. It is hilarious. But this is the room my office is going to be in because I determined that the light is just very consistent all day in here, which is very nice. And in the early a.m., you do see a little bit outside the window. But these are the lights I'm talking about. I hate them. They suck. They need to change. They're super cheap and super just builder default. So I definitely want to change that. This light here, <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't love it. I'd change it to something more modern, simple. And then this is the guest room, but it's just glow. Like this is all just glow atelier. This is all just glow atelier. A. Like I need to organize, unpack, and fit it all into this room here, which is the glow atelier room as much as I possibly can. So with this house, I do want to talk about a few things. So I think a few of you might be thinking like, why do two people need so much space? Why do two people need such a big house? And just by looking at all the glow atelier stuff like that, Pretty much every box you saw upstairs is just the business. What? <laughs> Flynn loves this house. But all those boxes you saw upstairs is basically just my office and Glow Atelier. And Glow Atelier quickly outgrew the house that we were in last year. Like throughout that, that last year, it, it just outgrew. It took over our entire living space. Like we didn't have a kitchen. We didn't, <laughs> why is he so crazy? <laughs> We didn't have a dining room for about a year. Um, Honey Boy's office was com completely filled with boxes of merchandise. My office was taken over. And basically the only rooms that we had for living in was the living room and the bedroom. And so that was also a rental. And, uh, you know, it just was a good time for us to, I don't know, get our first house. And with all those factors in mind, such as the current market that we were in, as well as the space that we needed to get the business, because it was that or renting out like, a, like an office commercial space just for Glow. And then I would need to commute every day just for, you know, having space to hold Glow Atelier inventory and fulfill orders. And that just doesn't really make sense, especially since like I can easily work from home. So with all those things put together, it just made so much sense for us to, you know, invest in a bigger home so that we can get more time out of having Glow Atelier in-house to actually save costs rather than renting out a commercial unit. So that way I can still operate from home without having to get a car and commute every day and, you know, paying rent on a commercial space and all those kind of things that go into it. So that is why two people needed such a big house. And on top of that, homes in Texas are just huge. Like, I think the price of this house, I think at the end of the day, it was roughly around 530. My parents paid 500K for their house in Canada, first house in Canada way back in the day, like 30 something years ago. And that was not nearly as big as this, uh, not nearly as many square feet. You know, it was it was in our budget, just in our budget. And I'm I'm not young, guys. I'm like I'm in I'm in my early thirties, right? <laughs> so, you know, first house. Um, the opportunity was great. The investment was amazing for future purposes. Uh, if we in the future find we don't need this much space, then we can always rent it out. It's just a great opportunity for us to invest in our future and also to make that leap for the business and also so that we can have a house that we can feel like isn't just surrounded and totally engulfed in business and work because that's what our old rental turned into. Like you couldn't escape it. There was no personal space. It was just chaos. There wasn't enough storage. 
And our rent was going up. Our landlord increased our rent like two times over. And it's just like, you know, made sense. So that is the explanation. I know how it can be seeing people on YouTube and on social media making it look so glamorous, like, oh, buying a house. But there is definitely a lot more behind it. There's a lot more logical explanations behind it. And uh, that's, that's kind of it. I'm not gonna go too much into the nitty gritty and the financials of it because that's not something I wanna share online too much. It's personal, but those are the main reasons as to why we ended up getting our first home. And a lot of you guys are probably wondering, like, are you, are you planning to live in Texas permanently? Uh, the answer is no. There, our future, our game plan is not to permanently be here. Um, the goal for us both is kind of like what I've strived out for my entire life so far, which is having a home base uh, where you need to have a home base. So like that's, you know, owning something so that no matter what, you always have that, you can always come home to that. But then also having like the opportunity and the flexibility to have a home in Japan or a living situation in Japan. It is officially one day shy of being a full week that we've been living in the new house. And in that time, I have tried, we have tried to see if Sesame, the stray cat from our previous house, would get along with the boys and she just won't even have it. She is very like not curious at all to get the note to know the boys. She's very defensive, um, not friendly whatsoever towards them. Uh, we let her out to explore the house a few times at night and she just didn't want anything to do with them. There was a lot of growling and hissing even though like she, she knows them. She's been seeing them for like over half a year through windows, like, you know, through screens and just, I don't think she's ever going to be a cat that we can adopt inside the house, unfortunately, just because she's very unfriendly towards the boys, and that's just not fair. Um, but she's super, super dependent on us. She's friendly with us. So, of course, we're not going to give up on her. So I am going to set up a little outdoor space for her today and let her back outside because she really wants to be outside. She is 100% an outside cat. She just wants to be out there. I think she was probably born outside, like there's a good chance. Uh, so we are going to set her out today. And I've been really hesitant to do that right away because I'm afraid of her getting lost because it's a new neighborhood. She's not familiar with it. So one of you guys in the comments said rub butter on their paws so that they can find their way home. But what I'm gonna do instead is take one of my perfumes and put it on her paws. And some of you guys might think like, oh, that could be irritating. I think it will be fine. Um, I want something really, really strong. And then I'm also gonna spray like our backyard. I'm gonna spray our front yard um, so that she can easily associate, like follow her scent and find out where we live if she does venture off, which I'm sure she will. She does have an air tag on her and she does have a collar with her name and our phone number on it. So fingers crossed, but that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to create a new sleep spot for her outside on our balcony. And I bought these feeder things because we're going to Japan really soon. And my friend Rachel isn't going to be able to make it here in time for watching the kitty boys for when we leave. So we're going to have maybe a different friend watching or like one of the neighborhood girls or like a hired help. But um, just in case they forget, Sesame to check on her if she's not around. I got these feeders on Amazon last night that just kind of auto dispense and then I'll secure them to the, the fence with water as well so that in case there's raccoons in the neighborhood, they won't run away with it. But yeah, just in case, because I am a little bit worried about her. And I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her box in this corner right here so that it's covered and shielded from like the outside and then put her little feeder against the fence here and secure it with like rope or, or like zip ties or something so no raccoons can steal it and then she should be comfortable and safe as well i also roughly painted the bricks <laughs> with brick paint yesterday because i really hated the color it really just brightens up the whole like patio during the day and it's really like really nice like it's totally my style I like it but yeah I just did a rough paint job see how it goes if I feel like I need another coat I'll buy another quart of paint but <laughs> the color I chose was called warm milk and I'm like and I actually got some gold glitters to put in it but they didn't show up at all which was surprising I feel like 
I was expecting them to show up, but they just don't whatsoever. So I think if you did want to put like some little like glitters to get like an iridescent effect on something like that, you'd probably have to do it like as a top coat, like a clear top coat. But anyway, we have been waiting to get irrigation and sod put in and landscaping for the property, but they're saying it could take three weeks to even be able to schedule it. And we're going to be in Japan by then. So if I'm going to plant trees, I'm just going to go ahead and do them now. And then when the time comes when we can finally book, we'll just work around that because I don't want to miss the rainy season uh, for plants and stuff like that. And then I also want to get like some temporary containers because my plants are not thriving from the old house. The jasmine has almost completely died in the temporary pot. It's been in here for over a month now. That needs to change. The rose is surprisingly doing okay but the jade is not loving it it's barely alive so i want to get that out and into the ground asap and then this nectarine tree is not thriving so much anymore either i do have some nectarines growing but um it definitely needs to be transferred asap as well because it's starting to get a little wilty looking even though i'm like gently watering it every day so and it keeps falling over as well i had to tie it to the balcony but yeah i are Hey, no har, you can't go out har. Before the move, like a week before the move, I planted these bulbs in these temporary boxes and they sprouted so well. I can't even remember what these are. I think they're like hollyhocks. I don't have a clue. Uh, some of my bulbs didn't take though. I think they were dud roots, so this didn't do anything. So I might want to get some new ones, but either way, I want to get these into bigger planters so that when I can, after Japan and once we have the landscaping installed I can plant them properly but I don't want them to die in here I want them to be able to grow flowers for the summer I don't know if any of you guys remember but we initially tried making like a proper shelter for her and she refused to go in it we made like this thermal like giant bin made of plastic with a little kitty door it was like so good but she wouldn't go near it she was afraid of it and she preferred a cardboard box so that is why don't worry we're not cheaping out for her it's just that's what she prefers so we got her little heat slash cooling mat in there and hopefully fingers crossed she doesn't get lost uh, I think I'll go put perfume on her paws now and just set, set her free Jesus. oh you scared all right you sure you don't want to be outside? Scare. Thank you, sis. You sure? Hmm. Po positive? <laughs> sure you don't want out? Well, we'll see. I'm sure she's going to want out there, but it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, sis. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah. You should go to the window. It's a bit much right now. Hello my honeys and welcome to another chaotic day with me. It is officially the beginning of the second week of us being moved into the new house and it is kind of put together. I've got my mirrors unpacked. I mean, there's still like crap like this around. But, you know, we're coming together. I still am living out of the same outfits over and over again on repeat. But, like, you know, kind of things starting. I still don't know what to do with this wall. I'm going to put this painting there, but it feels so small compared to, like, the white space of the wall. So I'm not too sure. But look, we have a functioning kind of dining room. Like it's clean for the most part. And I found these pictures when I was unpacking. I don't know if any of you guys remember these from Toronto, but I never unpacked them when we moved to Texas and I just completely forgot that they existed. And I found them and these were like the two paintings that Honey and Boy and I painted when we first moved in together in Toronto. <laughs> Guess which one is mine and which one is his, but. <laughs> I was thinking of hanging them, not there, not there, but here, just cause like, I feel like I'm kind of over the style of them. Like they're fun and they're cute, but they're not like a main centerpiece in my opinion. Like ideally in the future, I'd put a window, a big window here, cause that would be gorgeous. But for now, 
Um, we'll put those two there and then maybe I'll make another painting there. Maybe I'll do a print, who knows? And then at some point change this light soon. It's even installed crooked. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's like super crooked. But yes, it's getting organized. It's getting a little clean. It's still not anywhere close to what I would like it to ideally be at, but it's becoming a functional home. I mean, this area behind me is still a disaster zone and my closet is not one bit unpacked, but <laughs> things are coming together, things are coming together, but I am really, <sighs> frick, man, I am really, really upset today because <sighs> yesterday morning, my laptop just stopped turning on and I did all the troubleshooting for it. Uh, I watched all the YouTube tutorial guides. I went to the official website for ASUS and followed their troubleshooting and nothing. And I called their, I called their support line this morning and they said, yeah, you have to send it in for repairs. Like, <laughs> If you did all our troubleshooting and like I listed everything I did off to the guy and he's like, yeah, you, we can't, like we have to like repair it. There's something wrong. And I'm like, what the heck? And what's annoying is that this has been going on like inconsistently for a, a couple years now, ever since we moved to Texas, where like it, I'll put it to sleep and then it just won't turn back on. Like it will shut off at some point fully and then just not boot back up. But usually after I like, after like I mass press a bunch of buttons for a while, or if I let the battery die out and then recharge it, it will turn back on. But this is the longest it's gone where it's not turned on and we're going like, it's been over 24 hours now. And I'm like, okay, I need a functioning laptop. Like I can't work, I, can, I can't work. But luckily, luckily I have um, a MacBook. It's like not really, like it can do the bare minimum, <laughs> but it only has like eight gig, gigs of RAM. So I can't do like my graphic work. I don't know about video editing. I haven't tried yet, but that's probably gonna be a real challenge for it. So like <laughs> the main things that I need to do for work, I can't do. Like all I can do is do emails and like respond, like send out a newsletter at this point, but it's really stressing me out. So honey boy's gonna come home from work early today. We're gonna go to Best Buy and see if the Geek Squad can repair it. And if they can't repair it, then I'll ship it off to Asus um, because the ASUS people said the turnaround time can be like up to 10 days and we leave to Japan <laughs> in like in like 13 days or like 12 days. So I'm like, I don't, I can't mess around with that. <laughs> so hopefully the Best Buy Geek Squad can figure out what's the problem and then I won't have to ship it in, but still like bad, bad timing. But anyway, Honey Boy and I have been a little stressed out lately because we're going to Japan in like 12 days and for three weeks. So the timing of moving into this house is kind of really bad. Um, even though like it was good in other regards, but in terms of like our, our fully booked, planned and paid for trip that we <laughs> planned out and paid for a year ago is quickly approaching. Uh, so there's not a lot of time in this house before we're out of here. And you know, that makes us concerned about the kitty boys because we don't have our usual cat sitter that we hire um, because we moved to a totally new area. We've been a bit uh, panicky in regards to what are we gonna do with the cats? What are we gonna do with the boys? So fortunately, one of my friends, Yona Shaw, said she'll be able to check in on them every day, once a day. So thank God she is so amazing. I feel so bad having to ask her last minute, but super, super helpful. <laughs> so fortunately we have her, but um, our, like that's a long time for just one check in a day. So we're trying to figure out a situation where we can have uh, somebody check in in the mornings as well. So <laughs> we're seeing if a little girl in the neighborhood, uh, we saw one of her flyers saying that she does pet sitting <laughs> for like $10. So we're gonna see if she can do the mornings, but the chances of her being able to do the mornings are really, really slim. But last, yesterday, we met our next door neighbors, um, finally, one of them. And they were super, super friendly. Like we went in their house, they gave us a tour of their house and everything. Um, like we were talking to them for probably over an hour. Um, so if, if the little girl can't do mornings, I might ask the neighbor if she can just come in in the mornings and just like scoop the boxes, that's it. And then like be out, but still like, 
it's not the most ideal situation, but it's better than nothing. So um, still a little stressed out about that. But fortunately, we have like all these Google cameras, Google Home installed in the house. We have a bunch of pet cameras. Like it's a lot more intense than it was in our rental because now that we're not renting, we can have so much more security put in place. So yeah, that takes a lot of stress off. But aside from that, uh, Sesame, you guys remember the stray cat from our rental house that became super dependent on us? She doesn't want to go outside. Why do I keep getting all these phone calls? Ever since the move, I just keep getting so many phone calls. There's, there's not a moment of rest at all. Like it's between unpacking and services coming to set up the house and issues upon like issues and trying to find like last minute cat sitters. It's just been, it's been, it's been too much to be honest. I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a bit borderline at my wit's end. Um, but now Honey Boy just called and said um, I'm going to have to go alone to the Best Buy, which I'm a bit nervous about because I don't drive really anymore. Like, usually Honey Boy drives me anywhere just because, like, you know, he usually has the car all the time. And if he's home, then, like, we might as well go together. And then since he drives all the time anyway, he might as well be the main driver, you know? Like, it's not, the, it's not like a passenger princess type situation, but it's just because, like, I don't... Like, it's just how it happens, but, like, I'm a bit nervous because I haven't driven around this side of Austin at all yet, so, <laughs> like, I'm a bit nervous, but, yeah, I'm definitely, who's crying? I'm gonna definitely a little bit at my wood's end, but anyway, Sesame, uh, the stray cat, hey, uh, Sesame, the stray cat from our rental house that became like fully dependent on us. We brought her with us, as you guys know, and she just doesn't want to go outside. Like I put her outside once and, and she like ran back in that you guys saw. And then I tried again one morning where she was more curious and she went outside and she did like a lap of the house, was really, really scared. And then she came running to the back door and wanted in again. Um, and she's been inside ever since. That was like a few days ago. She doesn't really seem to want outside. Um, and for the past two nights, she's been free roaming, uh, where she hasn't been isolated in a room overnight while we slept. And so far, no fights have broken out. She does hiss at the boys and like want her space, but she hasn't like tried to fight with anybody. And uh, yeah, she's just been sleeping in the couch the past couple days during the day and she'll come out for like food and water and then in the evening uh, she comes out out more often she's a little on a nocturnal like time schedule but yeah I'm like okay so do we have like a do we have like a fully adopted third cat now <laughs> so this is adding you guys this is adding more stress to the Japan trip because like well now it's like she's not an outdoor cat anymore like we can't just throw her out into a new area and like travel and like what the heck. And our neighbors yesterday were saying there's coyotes and foxes in the area. So I'm like, oh great. <laughs> so now it's like her safety as well. <sighs> That's add it's adding more stress because it's like, well, if we're gone for three weeks and nobody's gonna be house sitting, like they're just gonna check in like morning and night, then like what happens if like a fight breaks out, right? Or what if what if one of the boys gets hurt? So like fingers crossed, we got just under two weeks. I think we have just I think maybe we have just two weeks until we fly out. So hopefully in that time span, everybody can adjust, everybody can get happy with each other, and we can have a little more like comfort in the situation. But yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's a bit a bit um a bit crazy. I don't think I showed you guys this yet, but this is what I've done with the bath area. I really visualized like having the palms around the bathtub to just like add some color to the room and give it more of that like spa resorty feel. Like, I don't know, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. So these are date palms, I think they said, that I got from Home Depot, literally $30 a piece, amazing. And hopefully I can keep them alive. <laughs> But I'm loving it so far. I'm loving it so far. I'm so like, mm, love it. I went to Home Goods and I got a few things that I've been wanting. Let me show you. I got this fluffy fabric. 
because I want to redo the cat tower because we've had it for uh, three years now and it's a little shredded up. So I wanted to get some nice soft fluffy fabric for the kitty boys and redo the cat tower before I have to reassemble it after the move. And then for the kitchen table centerpiece, I wanted to switch it up because I won't be buying fresh flowers anytime soon. And for now, I've just had this here that I used to have in the little pocket windows that we used to have on the kitchen counters under the cabinets, but we don't have those here. So I just put this for the time being, but I wanna do like something bigger, something bolder, because this placement, it just feels very empty, especially without like a center window there. Everything just feels very empty and incomplete comparatively to what it used to be, especially because at the old place, I used to have this really giant like 32 inch diameter uh, lantern cover, like Japanese style lantern, but I didn't bring that because it ripped when I was disassembling it. And at some point we wanna switch this lighting because we don't like it. But for now, I wanted something to distract from the lighting and also to fill the void that is this room. So I got a bunch of fake flowers that I can assemble together. And then I got this step stool because I'm short and there's a lot of like cabinets and cupboards here that I can't reach. So that's for me because I'm short girl. And this is the accent table piece that I bought for my flake flowers. It's really nice and just the style I got it. Actually, I got this from Hobby Lobby and it was my first time in a Hobby Lobby and it was pretty good, it was pretty good. Got this kitchen drying rack for the inner part of your sink because we used to have one at the rental but it was the landlord's. So I just wanted to get one of our own that we can put in the sink to dry some cups. When we were at Home Goods, they had like pre-made like flower arrangements and they were just so outrageous in my opinion. Like they weren't that grand and they wanted like 150 bucks for them. I'm like, no, I'll do it myself. So we hopped over to Hobby Lobby and they were like 40% off all flowers and stems. I use this. And so I got a bunch of options because I couldn't fully decide in or on an arrangement. So in case I want to swap things out, I have a few options there. So I'm going to put that together with you guys and show you kind of what I come up with for this space. And I got a couple new bath towels because our white ones are not looking so good. We've had them for almost five years now, so it's time to get a little bit of fresher ones. And then I got a pack of matching hand towels because uh, we have two times the amount of bathrooms in this house and there's no hand towels in them. So a little pack of hand towels, super reasonably priced too, like $7. And then at our old local home goods, they like had no cat themed mugs. And I would always look whenever I went, only ever dogs and like Disney princesses, which was so weird. But the one that we went to today in South Austin had cat mugs. So I grabbed a couple. We got this one right here and this one right here and they're really good big sizes. The colors I'm not too sure about. Like this one outside wise cute but then it's purple on the inside which just doesn't really make sense to me. And this one's pink and black which is okay and then it says meow in there and I'm like yay, cute. And I saw this glass tea diffuser pot and I have never had one of This is the first version I'm thinking of. Very simple like Japan D style. But is that too autumn? I don't know. Like, it's nice. It's nice, but the chairs don't match. I know we just got these from Goodwill real quick. I want to buy proper kitchen, dining room chairs someday, but for now. Version two is a little more spring, summer. I've got white looking wisteria because this time of year in Japan is coming up to wisteria season. So I thought, ooh, that'd be nice. So still going with a little bit of that japan -y vibe. But I think I'm gonna go with this one for now because it's very summery here right now. And I think this suits the, the season a little bit better. I have all my fabric laid out and I'm turning this gray disassembled cat tower that is kind of falling apart and I'm just using a staple gun to easily <laughs> staple gun the fabric on and then once it's on I'll just trim the edges where needed but it's a really really easy staple gun you can get them from like Walmart uh, Home Depot 
super simple, super quick fix to refurbish a cat tower where the fabric is starting to be a little shredded on it. Right, Sesame? You've never seen before.